Okay, this board is convening back in open session. Uh, we have a report. No action was taken. Direction was given to the superintendent. Uh, with that, we'll uh, have the flag salute. I'll go ahead and give it if I can get up. My dog is on my lap. Okay, if you'll all join me. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Yeah, I understand we have a couple of people that like to make public comments at this time. Uh, we'll hear from public comment. Uh, Bastidas? Ms. Bastidas? Is that the right name? Yes, that is correct. There she is. Hello. Like Hi. Hello. Um, good evening, school board. I'm here on behalf of El Centro Fefe, and I'm here to give you an update on everything we've done. So throughout the past month, we've had multiple CD and LD teams practicing and preparing to advance the state level competitions. As of last month, we've had our parliament, oh wait, no, as of last week, I'm sorry. We had our parliamentary procedure team complete, compete at the regional level and the rest of our teams, including ag communications, livestock judging, veg crop, vet science, meats evaluation, marketing co-ops, and best informed green hand are preparing for state competitions, which will, which will take place in the beginning of May. Furthermore, our chapter is currently planning for our end of the year spring banquet, which highlights and honors the accomplishments of our 250 plus members throughout the year. Moving on, our last month's our last month chapter meeting applied, sorry, moving on last month, our chapter applied for three star awards, including star admin, star supporting staff and star counselor. These three awards are meant to recognize those who provide outstanding service to the local FFA program at their high school. Fortunately, our school counselor, Mr. Francisco Roman was awarded star counselor of the Southern region. This is a huge deal since the Southern region consists of 90 high, school, 90 high school FFA chapters. He will soon go up against other Southern, other region star counselors for the state star counselor award. It is an honor to say that we have the best counselor in the Southern region at our high school. Also, one of our FFA alumni, Madison Mills is currently competing at the state level for the star farmer award. The star farmer award is awarded to the to an FFA member that demonstrates the top production in agricultural supervised, super, <laughs> sorry, that demonstrates top production in agricultural su supervised experience in the state. To add on, one of our current FFA members, Francisco Rocha, who is currently finishing off his senior year, is one of our is one of the finalists for the State Star Placement Proficiency Award. Francisco is is being awarded for his for his exemplary work in the in his ag processing SAE, where he conduct where he conducts supervised agriculture experience work that includes working at a facility that extends the shelf life of fresh vegetables for consumers. In addition, this past month, El Centro FFA participated in California FFA's 5K run. This is a statewide event where our chapter members participated in in participated by running five kilometers throughout the week and our chapter highlighted local agriculture businesses by running by them and tagging El Centro FFA in Instagram posts. Lastly, last week our Imperial Section FFA announced that announced their slate for Imperial Section officers where three of our members were slated for three out of four of the highest positions on the officer team. Imperial Section elections are scheduled to be placed, are scheduled to take place May 22nd. Thank you for your time and thank you for listening. Thank you. 
I think there was one more, Ramon. Uh, yes, that is correct. Okay. I believe, Dr. A... I believe it's Dr. Bussey. Oh, okay, yeah. Dr. Bussey, orchestra leader at Southwest High School. Okay, Matt, speak to us. No. I see you. I know. <laughs> the microphone. <laughs> I just got to my house and so I'm kind of um, trying to get myself unorganized. All right, so you can hear me now? Yes. Okay, great. Um, I did want to talk about, because I know that on the agenda was the um, a, a discussion of the MOU that we were um, possibly looking into. So uh, a lot of the Imperial Valley College um, rehearsed, uh, uh, ensembles could rehearse uh, using our CUHSD facilities. Um, I know Renee Baker does the uh, Imperial Valley Jazz Band at Central. And since the beginning of this, this year, um, August of 2000, I've taken over the role of the conductor of the Imperial Valley Symphony. And <clears throat> even when Joel Jacklitz was in charge of it, uh, you know, I always talked to him about the possibility of moving the rehearsals to Southwest um, for, for a variety of reasons. Um, and, and I'll state some of those right now. One of the goals is uh, for, for the symphony as I see it is not only uh, to serve Imperial Valley's community or to serve as the community, Imperial Valley Community's Orchestra, but uh, use it as a means to get students from around the valley to become part of the larger group. Uh, many students are in their school groups. You know, we have students that are in their school's band, um, well, in my case, the orchestra, um, but they don't really get a chance to participate and, and work together on a regular basis, at, you know, as, as one big ensemble. Um, I've always envisioned the Imperial Valley Symphony is not, like I said, not only our community orchestra, but could also participate um, in a community group, um, kind of get to know each other, you know, wind players from, from Imperial can work with wind players from Southwest and Central and so forth. Um, and, and so the ability to join a more inclusive group gives them access to other musicians and the ability to perform uh, with the symphony, which a lot of students don't get a, a chance to do. Also being at Southwest, if we have our uh, rehearsals there, uh, it'll benefit a lot of students because one of the biggest obstacles that I found when I'm trying to get my students to show up to rehearsals is the, the inability to be able to get to the IVC. And, I know that when I've had some rehearsals there in the past due to, you know, if we're doing um, a stage rehearsal or things like that, the rehearsals were a lot more impactful because we had a lot more presentation there, a representation there from the students. So the fact that uh, Southwest is closer than Imperial Valley College is another reason. Um, here's another big reason is that the facilities we have at Southwest, even if we're just using the band orchestra room and not the stage, they're far superior to what we have at, at Imperial Valley College. We're, you know, when we rehearse the uh, orchestra at, at the Imperial Valley College, it's a classroom with desks. Uh, luckily, the desks have the ability to move um, a little platform, you move it out of the way, but they're still, you're still dealing with a, a handle here. Um, and also acoustically, it's again, it's a classroom and it's not all that great. And we're only using half of the classroom because the other half has the computers. Um, for like the music technology class that I teach there. Um, so the facilities are a lot better and, you know, students have their instruments there and things like that. Um, another big factor when I, a uh, reason I would like to do this is by having more students um, have the ability to participate because it's closer and, and all those other reasons I uh, aforementioned, uh, it would help recruiting. One of the biggest obstacles that we're gonna have post COVID is a lot of our ensembles, you know, when I talk to other band directors and things, is a lot of our ensembles are gonna be suffering regarding numbers because we haven't been able to recruit. We haven't been able to get out there and talk to the middle schools or the elementary schools. Um, so that's gonna significantly hurt our numbers. And I think the, a step in the right direction would be to, you know, start getting more students involved in the symphony. And again, these are all just kind of, kind of build one upon the other. Um, and lastly, one of the reasons uh, that I, I'm trying to recruit more students into this program is because juniors and seniors right now have the ability to do concurrent enrollment, which they could take a college level course. Um, 
and up to a certain amount of hours that they can take with the with IBC. And so they register that. And, you know, I do have about four students right now doing it. And I think we'd have more, number one, once we get live, number two, uh, if we had the access to use kind of their, especially the string players, their home base, so to speak. Um, the cooperation between IBC and CUHSD is becoming more and more important. You know, we're, we're offering more dual enrollment courses. Um, and so one of the advantages that students would have is that it gives them the ability to take these college classes and help them with the college readiness and uh, for, especially for those that are wanting to pursue higher education. So that's my justification. I could come up with more reasons if you want, but <laughs> take up too much of your time. Thank you. Um, and I, can I offer a plug? Heck yeah. Okay. Uh, on May 21st and May 22nd, the Southwest Orchestras are doing a live concert. So, yes. <laughs> Obviously with limited capacity and we're working together with Rodney in the theater about the protocols and things. Uh, we're working all that out, but we're so excited that we're finally able to do a concert. And we're going to use it as a little fundraiser, of course. You know, we, you know, we haven't had any chance to raise any funds for anything this year. So this is our one opportunity. And so I welcome you all to, to join us. I'll send out some, I have some links here, but I would type them in a chat. But what I'll do is I'll uh, maybe attach them to uh, and send them out to Dr. Andrews or something. He can forward them to everyone. That would be good. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. That's all I got for you guys. Thank you, Dr. Bessie. Thank you. I think that's all the people that we had that wanted to speak on to the to the agenda. Uh, I would like to go off record for just a second, or not on record, but off task. Uh, I received word over the weekend that a beloved teacher from Central High School passed away. Her name was Mary Ann Klein. She started in, in the mid fifties and she taught until about 1989 or 90. And she was phenomenal. And I would just like us, I'd like all of you to join me in a moment of silence on her behalf. Please bow your head. Thank you very much. Okay, we will now go to uh, uh, approval of the agenda. Do I have an motion for the approval of the agenda? I have motion to approve the agenda. Thank you, is there a second? I will second. Okay, thank you. It was moved by uh, Mrs. Pinedo and seconded by uh, Mr. Hernandez. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. Abstentions? Okay, approval of the agenda has taken place. Now let's go to consent agenda items. The first thing on the consent agenda items is a memorandum of understanding between the Imperial Community College District and the Central Union High School District pertaining to credit and non-credit classes on CUHSD facilities. And we've heard a nice plea from Dr. Bussey. Do we have any other comments now that this is agenda item? Okay. Do I hear a motion? I will motion for the member. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hernandez. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, moved by Mr. Hernandez, second by Dr. Or Mrs. Garcia Ruiz. I just elevated you. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Sound like it passed to me. Okay, Dr. Bessie, you're in like a bandit. <laughs> okay, the personnel report. Can I hear a motion to approve the personnel report? I don't hear a motion. I will, I will motion to approve the personnel report. Thank you, Mr. Hernandez. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. It's been moved and second uh, by Mr. Hernandez and Mr. Rodriguez to approve the personnel report. All those in favor say aye. Aye. 
Aye. Aye. Thank you. We will now go to adoption of the board resolution number 042721-20 for proclaiming the month of May as Mental Health Matters Month. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez, would you care to read that? Eric, did you copy? Oh, yes, yes. One second. Thank you. Did you work in that business? Mm -hmm. Okay, Central Union High School District. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, perfect. Central Union High School District Board of Trustees Resolution Number 042721-24 in support of Mental Health Matters Month. This measure, this measure would recognize May 2021 as Mental Health Matters Month in the Central Union High School District to enhance public awareness of mental health and dispel the stigma surrounding it. Whereas half of the population will experience some type of mental health challenge over the course of a lifetime, and whereas mental health challenges are one of the most common health conditions in California, affecting one out of every six youth and impacting both the person experiencing the mental health challenges as those persons who care and love the person facing the challenge. And whereas every day millions of people face stigma related mental health and may feel isolated and alone going years before receiving any help. And whereas recovery can and does happen and all the Californians should know that support and help is available regardless of individual situation and whereas creating a community where everyone feels comfortable reaching out for the support they deserve is crucial to ending the stigma around mental health. And whereas access to support and ending the stigma of a paramount importance and whereas Southwest High School, HOSA, Future Health Professionals, the Coalition for Student Wellness and Southwest High School and the Central Union High School Yellow Ribbon Club promote mental health awareness throughout the student and staff activities in order to build and sustain supportive campus environments. And whereas the Central Union High School District wishes to enhance public awareness of how mental health now, therefore be it. Now, therefore be it resolved by the Central Union High School District Board of Trustees, of concurring the Central Union High School District hereby recognizes May 2021 as Mental Health Matters Month to enhance public awareness of mental health to help end the stigma. Thank you very much. Uh, do I hear a motion? I would like to motion. Do I hear a second? I'll second. It's been moved by uh, Mr. Rodriguez and seconded by Mrs. Pinedo to approve this resolution. This is a roll call vote. Uh, Carol? Jose Hernandez? Aye. Yes, aye. Trustee Pinedo? Yes. Trustee Rodriguez? Aye. Trustee Jones? Yes. Trustee Garcia Reese? Yes. So President Jones, if I could just comment just for a minute before we move on to the next agenda item. Um, yes. I wanna appreciate, I, I very much appreciate the staff, um, specifically Ms. Uh, Jackie Valadez, who is our host chapter advisor, along with many, many of the students who, cause I have attended this joint committee between the Central Union Yellow uh, Ribbon Club and Southwest HOSA and other professionals, um, other district staff members at the sites when they've addressed this. I have stepped in and seen um, training opportunities for all of our staff on our Make It Happen Mondays that they've been had an increased uh, awareness around mental health. And even before the school year started, we required all of our teachers to take a suicide prevention or suicide awareness prevention um, training before the school year even started. It, it, this is an ongoing challenge as everyone is in different places. And even today I was um, watching a news story about um, all different times of, of trauma and fatigue. Even if we're not experiencing it ourselves, we're kind of gathering it as we see other trauma and other crisis, we end up getting uh, almost by osmosis where we're absorbing some of that into ourselves. And so recognizing the need for mental health and mental wellness at all different levels, um, if it's a very serious condition or, or just kind of just some self-care at a lower level, 
um, it's important that we do it. So we very much appreciate the this proclamation and this resolution because it's very grassroots. This is not one that the district office pulled down off some menu of resolutions like we sometimes do. This is one that came up from the school site saying we want to do something specific about it. So I very much appreciate what's happening at the school sites and how this is in essence bubbling up as opposed to being delivered top down. So again, thank you to our staff who brought this forward for the board to consider. And uh, I, I've actually been engaged using the, the tool Hootsuite to gear up a whole bunch of social media posts that'll start coming, hopefully in essence, bombarding people with good reminders about mental health that'll happen in the month of May. Uh, and that's just one piece and one way that we'll start to see some of that of Mental Health Awareness Matters Month uh, taking effect. So thank you for the time to comment. Thank you. We will now go to item three, public disclosure of the initial contract proposal from the CSEA, California School Employees Association and chapter 726 to the Central Union High School District Board of Trustees for the 2021 school year. Okay, we, that has been disclosed. Did everyone receive a copy of that? Good. Uh, it should be in the packet. Uh, we look forward to, and we will disclose our chapters for negotiation in the month of May in just a few weeks time at our regular board meeting on the 11th. And we'll begin negotiations with uh, CSCA in the coming weeks after that. Okay, thank you. Uh, it is requested the board accept approval of award of bids for the trade contract bid packages as described by the Central Union High School STEM building proposal. Do we have anyone that wants to speak to that item? I see Mr. Sanders on, Arnold. Yeah, Mr. Sanders is available for specific questions and Mr. Preciado um, is also available if he wants to add a few comments before we get started on this. Okay, anyone have any questions regarding the uh, contract bid packages as described in the, our packet? Hearing none, then uh, we need to approve a resolution. Re re resolution. Resolution. Uh, I don't believe this is a resolution. Um, item oh, okay. four is just accepting the bid packages. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, we have a motion to accept it. I'll make a motion to accept the bid packages. Is there a second? I'll second. I'll second. Oh, go ahead, Mr. Rodriguez. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's just really tough to unmute. <laughs> I understand. Um, All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. I didn't hear any nay, so I'll assume that everybody else said yes. Ms. Jones, if I may, I just want to begin with a, a, a quick uh, a bit of information regarding this and the other two items that are coming before the board. Okay. Um, the district uh, did go out to bid for these items um, uh, under bid package 2C, bid package 3A, bid package 19, and bid package 20. Now these four of the eight, uh, we did receive some kind of response based on the bid advertisement. Uh, we only received two bids for bid package 19, which is the building furniture and equipment. The other ones were single items. And in discussion with uh, Mr. Sanders and uh, the superintendent and Dr. Andrus and myself, and taking a look at these bid packets, we feel that these are reasonable bid packets that we got for these four. And that's why we had requested that the board consider these for approval as you just did. The following item, I'll, I'll explain a little bit more as we move into that one. Okay, thank you, Mr. Preciado. Okay, this next one, I believe, is the resolution. 
Request board adopt approved resolution number 0427-2021-25 to no competitive advantage finding and awarding contract change orders for work for bid packages number 8A, number 9A, number 18A, and number 21 for the STEM building project. All those in, oh, it's, it's a resolution. Roll call vote. Trustee Hernandez. Uh, aye. Trustee Peinado. Aye. Trustee Rodriguez. Aye. Trustee Jones. Aye. Trustee Garcia Reese. Aye. Hearing five people say aye, that, won't, that the resolution has passed. Okay, now we'll go to request board approved change order number one to bid packet 11 and change order number three to bid package number 12 for improvements, modifications for the Central Union High School STEM building. That was not a resolution. So is there a motion to accept that? I'll, I'll motion to accept that, uh, accept the or change in orders. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. So it's been moved and seconded to approve item number six. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. No, I'm, I'm an, yes. Okay, yes. <laughs> now, are there any nays? I thought I heard five of us. Okay, that motion passes. Carol, you have a question? Yes, please. Um, Ms. Jones, I don't know if we if we um, got a motion and a second for item five. I don't think I heard that. Yeah, resolution. It was, uh, uh, I think, uh, Mr. Hernandez and Mr. Uh, Rodriguez. Okay. Is that correct? I think that's the one I couldn't unmute on, so yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, Ms. Jones, that does conclude our agenda items um, for, for this uh, special meeting. We, we appreciate the board's willingness to meet on a special session. Um, a lot of this did stem originally from the need to the timing of our request for proposals on these construction packages. Um, we're very pleased with the ones that came in. Um, we're a little disappointed we didn't see more interest, but uh, what we're seeing right now is that contractors are very, very busy and they can pick and choose which ones they want. And um, they're not as competitive bids as we used to see. However, we did get a really good uh, competitive bid with our furniture package between the two. And uh, by approving the, 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 the packages today, um, we did get a really um, excellent offer on that. Um, they were a lower priced vendor and the, actually the furniture that, they, that we want to use will be even lower still. So we'll see some cost savings on some of those things, which are good because some of the change orders are increases in expenses. Um, to the best of our knowledge, this completes all of the packages necessary to complete the building. If that's not true, Mr. Sanders, I need you to speak up right now. Uh, but but I, that's our understanding is that these are all the packages that are necessary to complete the projects. Um, th there is still the potential of a change order here and there as items come in and they're finalized, uh, but we are closing in. Uh, we're seeing good progress. Uh, we really are uh, concerned, as, as I've mentioned to many board members, about the ability to deliver the project before school starts. So we're going to push on our contractors and our construction managers to make sure people are, are uh, working when they're supposed to be working and fulfilling their obligations. And, and I've had on good authority that, oh, no, they're going to wrap it up and bring this project in. So um, again, if, if any of you board members would like to take a tour, even midday and wear your construction boots, we'll be glad to walk you through the project. Uh, Mr. Sanders, myself, or Mr. Preciado would be glad to walk the project with you so you can see it firsthand. Um, and that same is true for our in-person learning that's happening in the afternoons. Um, if you're free, we'd like to see some of that. Um, or even if you just even if you just see what's happening when we check students in at 1.30 in the afternoon, there's 150 to 200 students lining up at the gates 
as they come in for a quick uh, active screening process to come in for in-person learning. Those opportunities are still always available to you as board members to come and see firsthand what's happening in our, in our schools and in the construction as well. So thank you, I appreciate that. Okay, thank you everybody. I will adjourn the meeting at this time. It is uh, 6.36 p.m. I have a good respite. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, and thank you. <laughs>